This video is going to demonstrate some of the techniques that we use for our Asian carp water productivity sampling. There are a number of samples we have to take while on the water, such as secchi depth, temperature and oxygen readings, chlorophyll A samples, total phosphorus, 20 micron zooplankton to collect rotifers, 55 micron mesh zooplankton to collect larger zooplankters, and larval fish. So the first technique we're going to demonstrate is how to take secchi depth. The secchi disc is carefully lowered into the water until you just can't see the difference between the black and the white sections. Then, slowly raise the secchi disc until you can just see the difference between them. The midpoint of these two depths is what we consider the secchi depth. Note that the pole is marked in centimeters to aid in taking your measurements. So always remember to remove your sunglasses before you do this. Lower the secchi disc just deep enough until you can't see the difference between the black and the white. Raise it until you just do see the, the difference between them and the midpoint of these distances is marked with your hand and then record that depth and that's the secchi depth. Now the next technique that I need to demonstrate for you is how to take temperature and oxygen readings. Now before we take our temperature and oxygen readings we have to calibrate the oxygen meter. And so to do this we have to first take off the cap that covers the membrane and inside that is a little piece of cotton. We got to make sure it's damp but not soaking wet. We don't want big drops of water on the membrane. Put the cap back on and then you hit the switch, take the switch and turn it to calibrate and the screen asks calibrate in percent and you want to hit confirm and then it says what enter the last value and it should say 100 percent and you want to confirm again. So now it's calibrating for 100% oxygen, which is what you have inside that humid environment inside the cap. Once it's done calibrating, you can switch back to read and you'll see that it actually will give you the oxygen in percent now. Now we're going to take our readings in milligrams per liter, not percent. Now make sure you take the cap off and just drop the probe in the water. The other trick when taking oxygen readings is to work on your jiggle. Keep that probe jiggling like I'm doing here, very subtly, but you got to keep it moving. And at the same time, as you're reading oxygen, you can also read temperature. We take these readings at the surface and at one meter. For the chlorophyll A and the total phosphorus samples, all we have to do is take a water sample and put it in the proper jar and then take it back to the lab. So there's really nothing for me to show you here. Our 20 micron zooplankton sample is for our smaller zooplankton, like rotifers. And because they're so numerous, we don't need a very big sample. We only need to filter 10 liters of water. So to get our 10 liters of water, we just use the hand pump to fill up the clear plastic container, which is 5 liters. And then we take and transfer the 5 liter sample to one of the pour buckets. And then we just do it again and transfer the sample to the other pour bucket, which we'll then use to pour the sample through our 20 micron filter. The 55 micron zooplankton sample is for larger zooplankton, so we need a larger sample. We'll use the hand pump to fill this garbage can up to the 90 liter mark, and then we'll filter those 90 liters. Once you have your water sample, the filtering is the same for both the 20 micron and the 55 micron. Make sure the valve is closed on the bottom of the filter, then put the filter into the holder and 
place the funnel in the top. Now all you have to do is take the pour buckets and pour the sample through the funnel, through the filter, and allow the water to go back into the river. Again, you have to make sure that that valve is closed so that it retains the zooplankton sample. Once you've filtered all the water, just remove the funnel, find your sample jar, make sure you've got the correct sample jar, then take the zooplankton filter and carefully hold it over the sample jar and open the valve to release the sample into the sample jar. Then take the hand sprayer and thoroughly clean off all of the filters. Make sure that the water that you squirt to clean off the filters is all also collected in the sample, sample jar. Once you've got the filter clean, keep the valve open and thoroughly flush the zooplankton filter and allow it to drain completely. Then close the valve before you put the filter away. The final step is to add preservative to your sample. Since this is the 55 micron, I'm adding Lugol's solution. And you need to add it until the sample is the color of weak tea or the color of brandy. For the 20 micron sample, you're going to use formalin plus rose bengal. And you only need to add a little until it's the color of pink lemonade. Finally, once you've got the preservative added, double check the label on the sample and you're done. The last thing I want to show you is how we sample larval fish. You begin by attaching the bucket to the end of the larval push net. Then you can drop that bucket in the water. Before you do anything else, you need to check your flow meter and get your starting readings. Then, after you've recorded the initial value for the flow meter, you can drop the larval net into the water and use the chains to adjust it so that it runs just below the surface. So then you're going to drive at about the pace of a fast walk for about five minutes. What you're shooting for is 10,000 clicks on the flow meter. So make sure as soon as you're done to record the final reading on the flow meter. Then try and flush out the bottom of the net and get any, everything into the bucket. And then you can pull the bucket up onto the bow and unscrew it. Use the alcohol in a squirt bottle to clean off the mesh and also to clean down the sides. Then you can take the sample that's in the bucket and transfer it to your sample bottle, again double checking that the label is correct. Rinse off with a little bit more alcohol and then after you're done you're probably going to want to even top it off with a little bit more alcohol to make sure the sample is well preserved. Once you're finished, rinse out the bucket and you're done. So always be careful on the river and don't forget to have fun. Thanks a lot.